So welcome back everyone. Uh, today we are here for episode two uh, of our Over the Limit podcast. Um, today we have a special episode. Uh, we have the first time we have a special guest uh, taking part in our podcast, but that is for later on. Lawrence first has to introduce something or announce something. So the mic is yours. I don't know what you're talking about. No, <laughs> no it's actually the first um, episode which we will uh, film, as some of you can see, and uh, you can find it on YouTube. Uh, we'll also share some of the content on social media, uh, some of the funny parts. Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing is, uh, as some of you saw who follow me on social media, um, this is that my wife, uh, Jacqueline, and myself started uh, the Larry Foundation. Um, short story about it. I thought we thought that, you know, I think both of us, you and me, were quite privileged with, with the life we have. Uh, unfortunately, it's not for everybody in the whole world. Um, so we thought it's it's time to give back a bit. Um, we're still discovering uh, the right things to do, but we're trying to collect some funding through, through merchandising. Um, we'll also organize some events uh, through the year, some, some go-kart events or some track days. Um, We'll also try to auction some of uh, my suits uh, and other stuff. Not these suits, but uh, and how you do it? How you you use a like a company, or you just do it yourself? Well, we'll we're still working on it to to define everything, but we uh, will do an auction through to eBay or another website. Um, actually, yesterday we uh, discussed with somebody our first project we which we want to support in the future. It's a small. Um, city and in Senegal actually people which we know uh, are working there and they're they're helping the schooling system That's nice. for small children um, rewarding the parents when they have good grades so our father wouldn't have gotten anything <laughs> if you were there <laughs> um, well, that's, no. and they're learning they're learning the the women because there's a lot of single women there to to produce food and, and make clothing, um, not just give money, but you know, educate them and, and give them a bit of a better life. So that's very nice. That's very kind of you. I didn't know you were this kind, but not to you, but to other people. Yeah, I tried to. That, yeah. I, 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 that's very nice. I, I like people who who do, who do this. I you, also you can you can you can fund if you want. I can give you my yeah. bank account. Like. Yeah, if you want, maybe for Christmas or something. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Um, so yeah, those were the two things. Um, what have you been up to in the off season? Are you a professional golf player yet, or? Uh, actually, you know, I'm I'm taking lessons. Uh, I was good, but I'm trying to get even better. Um, but it's difficult. It's uh, it requires a lot of uh, patience, which I didn't get. Enough. I think from my father, I didn't get this. Um, but uh, you know, it goes step by step. And other than that, you know, I'm training uh, two times a week. Oh. So um, yeah, it's it's, impressive. Um, you know, it's. Slowly coming, slowly building up, but uh, it takes time, you know. Rome wasn't built in a day, no. they always say, so. Also not that 24 years long, but. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I'm happy I started one day. And other than that, no, not so much. What about you? Um, typical, I... Yeah, typical training, yeah. six days a week. Sometimes seven, I get up, I'm doing it even more professional than you used to for me. I get up at seven in the morning, I do my yoga. Do my meditation, uh, then I go training. Um, train a second time in the afternoon. Stop drinking at all. Looking at my food a lot. Going to bed before ten. Um, Did you fell down some way or? <laughs> <laughs> I, I knew you were thinking that, but no. It's it's. Uh, I mean, I'm happy with. It, so that's the most important. I'll be ready. Actually, we went uh, karting the other day. Exactly. First time since six years. Well, it was good fun. Huh? We really enjoyed it. Yeah. Especially, uh, it was not as physical as I went last time because I went, uh, I think, one week before you, before we went together. Mm -hmm. And uh, after the half a day, I was... Um, half, half an hour, probably. Yeah, a few runs. Uh, I was I was done. I uh, couldn't feel my arms. When my shoulders were gone. My neck was even having a hard time, which is weird in a go-kart. But um, no, but we went together and really we had fun. Did some battles, some racing. At the end, you were a little bit slower, but it doesn't really matter. Are it's you just not, a small are you detail. Not, are you not worried yet? Why? Well, just the fact that you have a brand new go-kart, one year old. I drove in our father's one, which is 10 years old. The tires on there were three years old. Just no? put in some 
Only we even kept the old fuel, and I was only three tenths slower than you, and I'm ten kilos heavier. I'm Imagine if we equal the weight, and then we put on the same tires. I'm feeling confident. <laughs> no, no worries at all. I uh, okay. the day cannot come soon enough if you want. We can go. <laughs> we'll uh, we'll get a filming crew and evidence and a yeah. lawyer. And Don't you remember we had this once in uh, hot? It's it's been a few years. I for sure you remember. We went go karting together, and there was a film crew with us. Yeah. And, uh, Who was Quaker? I was. <laughs> and our dad was there as well. And uh, I remember, you probably will say it wasn't true, but um, he said um, to not go too quick in the race because otherwise on video it would look too stupid for you. Uh, yeah, so, of course. But I don't remember. but I just hold back a bit. So it, wasn't, yeah. it looked equal. But uh, So yeah, as you want. I mean, the day cannot come soon enough. <laughs> I remember you crashed. I did. I uh, braked a bit too late. Um, yeah, it was either crashing into you, so I, I took the night. I, well, you I'm already did that a couple you. months ago, so that was maybe yeah, good well, to avoid. Depends, depends who's, who's <laughs> talking about it. I mean, I've got different opinions, different people no. saying different things, but no, but um, it was good fun. We enjoyed it, and we are going to do it more often now as well. Because I'm we going every Wednesday, training. yeah. So I'm actually going tomorrow, but you're yeah, I have to go duties, I have to go to work, <laughs> okay. Um, well, I think it's time for our guest now. As I said in the beginning, uh, we have a special episode. So we have our first guest here today, uh, our own father, uh, as we actually know, should be should be the case. Um, so yeah, if you can head over, um, we introduce him, Rafi. <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> Hello, girls. So all, all good. Everything good? On. I just had a question for you guys. You just talked about Senegal and a lot of single women. Single Where was it exactly? <laughs> 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 okay. <Yeah. laughs> All righty. Well, we can talk about that later, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, well, well, that's what they told me, but I mean, that's all I know. You're doing the charity, so I mean, you, you must doing know it together with Jacqueline, so yeah. yeah. So yeah, let's start. Um, you also raced when you were younger. I mean, we were not there. Um, I remember, I have some vague memories of you go-karting, and the only thing I remember was you were passing on two wheels every time in, in Genk in, in, in the last or the first corner. Um, Maybe I had to do something with my weight. I don't know. <laughs> or my speed. Could be. Both. <laughs> but how, yeah. Tell us how it go, uh, how it went, and what you what you did. And well, I begged my parents for years to to get a go kart because I I think it was uh, at one time in my hometown there was a street race with karting. At that time, there were still many street races, so I saw it and I was fully in love with it. But uh, I didn't get one until after a few years, and uh, at that time I moved to Korea with my father. And uh, so I took the go-kart with me in the container with all our household stuff. And I drove on the, actually on the parking lot of the factory. Uh, I made my own circuit, drove there, which was pretty lonely, but was fun. And At then when I came back, uh, <laughs> I started karting <laughs> <laughs> in, uh, in Genk, uh, which went quite well. Uh, but I, I started in the wrong category. I started in the 125. And uh, Jean Gosses, Mark, his father, was yeah. there. And he saw apparently some talent in me was and fun? was pushing me to <laughs> drive the 100cc, which uh, I refused. And I just did the go-karting. And then, uh, yeah, it went uh, more to going out and having fun than the karting in the end. So I, uh, I messed up a bit. <laughs> and yeah. why did you stop? Because my father left me the choice either to get a Porsche when I got 18 or go-karting and uh, I choose the Porsche. <laughs> <laughs> Something you would do, I guess, as well. Especially in your go-karting days. Exactly, yeah. I mean, if I would have started, if I would have do it over again, I'd probably take the Porsche. <laughs> but a good one. Just not a, not a normal one. But, yeah. Do you regret taking the Porsche now? Or? Yeah. Uh, yes and no, because... Maybe because of that, I started to work very early and I was able 
to work hard and to to create the possibility for you two guys. Yeah. Otherwise, I've I would have stayed in karting. Uh, maybe you didn't get the chance you got now. Yeah, yeah true. Maybe we have to say, we have to thank you know. Thank Grandpa. Thank life. <coughs> you maybe know about it by your meditation. <laughs> 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 um, you also restarted racing. You had your own team, uh, Car Car Racing. Uh, we have some nice pictures of your successful. Uh, I think he called Google fest. and and, <laughs> and has to delete them all because I looked for five minutes, but I couldn't find any pictures. Oh. For sure, he made a small a special deal with uh, Google. It yeah. was also huh? yeah, that's true. I start again. I don't remember my age. Uh, I went a certain moment to Albert van Eerschot because uh, I knew he was in the racing world. And uh, I bought a Porsche and I bought a VW Golf. Uh, I started the first race with the Golf and I won. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And then uh, the second race was with the Porsche. And it was lots of fun. Uh, it was going very well. Uh, coming from, I think I was 10 and qualifying, and I was at P2 until I took over <laughs> one guy who didn't see the blue flag uh, well enough. And uh, <laughs> I hit sure him it was the a blue eye. flag? Yeah, that was a blue Ye flag. Yellow flag. Yeah. Not for me, for him. <laughs> eh? And I hit him, and uh, that was it, first <laughs> race. <laughs> and oh. then it went, yeah, it went a lot of fun. And then we started the own team with my friends, Kun and Chris. And that was also uh, very interesting. We had Wim, your engineer, worked yeah. for me uh, for several years. He was responsible for car car racing. But in the end, uh, it, uh, all the fun was gone for me because it was only I was busy with the racing team and I was in the car thinking about uh, uh, no car will crash and do we have enough parts and uh, did they think about this and did they think about that? So. At that um, was over. Then, then it's difficult to enjoy. If you also, I mean, for us, if we if you start thinking about of being scared, for example, it's yeah, you don't you just yeah. have to turn off your brain and, and and go. Also, imagine having to think. I mean, we're really in a luxury position with having to think about what it costs exactly. when we crash or when we have damage. Or well, you have a bit more. Experience if you have in to this, invoice right? yourself, you think a little bit different. Yeah, that exactly. was actually the highlight in my career <laughs> when I crashed uh, the first time, really crashed. In uh, the radio in Frank Show oh, and, yeah, uh, with a Viper, and uh, I was P4 or P5, I don't remember. And the Porsche in front of me uh, hit uh, or was hit in the back uh, by a Lamborghini, and they broke their cooling or vice versa. And all the liquid was coming on the radio, so I spinned. And uh, I was so proud to keep it out of the wall. When, when you came up, uh, I kept it out of the wall. I, I thought I said to myself, "Wow, Ralph, you did a good job." <laughs> and then a stupid BMW came <laughs> as the last car came up. He didn't see me and he hit me full in the side. So uh, I broke five, six ribs in my back. They thought my back was broken, and uh, that gave me a little, yeah, that changed me a little bit in the racing because I was also a lot older. And then the year after, the same race again with a new Viper. I said to Chris, I said, Chris, my radio syndrome is over. <laughs> now I'm going to go full throttle up the radio, which is now easy, but at that time it was not easy. Was he said, no, 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 Ralph, take it. He said, no, I go full throttle. I want to get rid of this thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I go full throttle. I hit like some of you guys also, not you, but your colleagues did, hit the inside curb going up the radio, yeah. and there we went. <laughs> <laughs> the car completely damaged. I was not hurt, and then I was so mad, I walked back to the pit, <laughs> and I came at the pit. We had a tent, actually. The guys were there, and I was, like, angry, and I kicked my helmet <laughs> through, <laughs> I remember. through the tent and broke my foot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I remember this. I also remember the first one, because I actually... I mean, we... We, we were there. Yeah, we, we couldn't hear anything about the crash, and we saw it, we heard it was... Um, serious? Serious. So I ran up all the way to Arouge and then I actually almost got into a fight with the doctor because he you? didn't yeah, he didn't want to let me through and I couldn't see where you were and uh yeah, spectacular. Yeah, it was a long time before my, they got me out of the car. Yeah, it was two thousand eight, eh? I mean imagine now today it's for us it's like 
even now when they change the um, the corner, it's not a corner for this. It actually, la- this year, 25 hours, it was uh, a lot of laps, easy flat. In yeah, but still, if you're... <laughs> I don't think you had to, the mindset to go even flat. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Yeah. Well, it's still a scary corner if it goes wrong, especially with people coming up. But Your dream as well was um, to do the 24 hours of Zolder with us. Well, actually, we all had the dream, but uh, it was, well... It was mainly your dream to do it with us, huh? Yeah. Uh, I have to say, w- the last race I did was when Lawrence won the 24 hours, and I was second uh, with the Radical, and you at the same day won the... Belgian championship, Belgian championship karting. karting of the minis. We <laughs> 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 heard of five people I driving. I was juniors. <laughs> juniors. Uh, so that day I said, okay, and I was also so upset with the team and everything, all those troubles we had. So I said, okay, this is it, I stop. But it's always been my my dream indeed to do the 24 hours. Uh, so if you guys agree that I do the qualifying and the end of the race to make the difference, then... I'm ready to go. Well, I mean, I can uh, I can just go stay in the sofa on Thursday. You can do qualifying, so I'm at least not there. <laughs> so I can't get the interview, but uh, yeah. no, I would be happy to do it. But are you really serious? You, you still want to do it? Are you just saying it for... Uh, no. To be cool on the podcast? No, no, no. <laughs> I really would like to do it. Uh, but uh, only if we have a, a winning... Uh, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I don't want to do it with a, with a Fiat Punto. <laughs> no, but you know what I mean. You can have a Porsche Cup car. Yeah, but I think I, with a Porsche Cup car, you win. Because this year, I mean, um, I did it this year and we were lucky enough to win it. But um, I don't know how the new rules are, whether the prototypes still can... Uh, there are no prototypes anymore. Okay, then it's, no? then it's possible. No, no. Since uh, this year, there are no prototypes anymore. But okay. yeah, there are GT2s and, and Super Trophies, which are very yeah. quick. So for Porsche Cup car, it's difficult. Okay, win. When a good driver's on there, you, the, the difference is small. But with the cup car, you can your your Don't fuel worry, capacity. I'll, I'll make the difference. <laughs> so now everybody which knows which, you, which you can you're gonna cut. <laughs> everybody knows where you have your big mouth from. It's quite obvious. <laughs> exactly. <the thing>. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the the the, the cup car has uh, the fuel. Capa- I mean, the fuel capacity is higher, but it also doesn't burn as much fuel per lap. That's a lot more reliable, I think, as a GT2 car. No. Yeah, I'm gonna say it, yeah. That's what I also thought. I mean, you this drove year. this year. Did yeah. you have to take care a lot of everything? or No, brakes mainly. Yeah. Um, but there's also the Porsche. Old. Also that has to do this. But fuel, we had to lift and coast every time. So we, we really mm. had to take care of our fuel. Okay. If we didn't do this, I don't think we would have won. Because the Porsche, as soon as we pit it, if the Porsche would be smart... Oh, we put it in an extra fuel tank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, right. This that is down. also an <laughs> option. Uh, maybe you can note it. Note that down. Do you actually? I don't think you know that the first time we uh, we, we didn't tell Vincent back then, but before I had a test for WRT that I uh, drove half a day in Zolder with uh, SLS yeah. with Wim. Yeah, I remember. I saw there's an onboard of it. Uh, yeah? yeah, I didn't know. Apparently, there was a lap record or something. Yeah, yeah, that was. Uh, but it was on confidential tires or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, you even out, but it was had to be secret. So. Uh, I think uh, Chris was also there, yeah. and uh, I was pushing him all the time, take it easy, take it easy, take it easy, don't uh, crash the car. <laughs> and then I think the first two laps you went right okay, and then you came in and you said, yeah, uh, can I have new tires? I don't remember at yeah, all. But can I have new tires? I said to Chris, he already wants new tires. <laughs> 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 and then uh, finally we gave you new tires, but we said again, Come on, Lawrence, don't break the car, please, don't crash it. And then uh, Chris was doing the chrono, and we were like normally 220, 221. 31. No, yeah, 31. Uh, yeah. 31, yeah, yeah, sorry. 30, 31. <clears throat> doing and qualifying. And then you came by, and Chris showed me 229. Point three or something you did yeah, in the yeah, first yeah, lap. Two twenty nine point three. I said, Chris, you're wrong. Can I be? <laughs> <laughs> and we asked Wim, Wim at the same time. And then we said, Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I uh, felt. I mean, in general, I felt really quickly comfortable in GT cars. Same yeah, the first time I drove with 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 WRT in the Audi or the first race. I always liked it somehow. 
I think because you have you said at that time you had more time compared to the formula cars in the corners and braking and the different things handling you had to do. Yeah, I think also Formula Three was a good was a good lesson for this. You never drove it, but everybody always said that Formula Three are one of the most difficult cars to to drive and to be quick. I mean, I only drove Formula Three. I did one test in I think a World Series, so difficult to compare, but. But that's also for me, I think Formula Renault, the two liter, it was a very difficult car to drive to get it on the limit. I mean, every car is difficult on the limit, but this car to get it set up and to make it work was very difficult. That's why I also think, but for me, it didn't go as fast as you. I needed one and a half year <laughs> to get <laughs> to get confident. I never forget I was at uh, Budapest and uh, we were going every year to, to the US uh, for our um, family holiday. And uh, Vincent asked me, oh, you don't want to do the, the Budapest test before the race? I said, no, Vincent, no, I'm, I'm skipping this one. I'm going on holiday. <laughs> and he was pissed. <laughs> and I came back on the on Budapest and we, I was quick as FP1, FP2, Paul, race one, race two. And, and he was like, what happened to you? What did you do? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. No it was clue. your break, breakthrough it was uh, weekend. Changing moment it was. Mm. So talking about others, because on the first episode we... We actually spoke about us, um, but I think you probably know even better than, than we do. You both experienced us, obviously. Um, Unfortunately. <laughs> what's the main difference from your point of view? I think it's sincerely big, but... Well, that's uh, quite a big difference, I would say. Uh, uh, I think you are... Uh, you have uh, enormously dedication and you show this by doing all the things you do around it. Meditations and stuff. And Dries uh, has uh, maybe inside also a lot of dedication, but he shows qu quite he hasn't the opposite. Found it yet. <laughs> <laughs> he shows quite the opposite. And still sometimes for me it's not clear whether he is playing it or not. But... Uh, <laughs> oh. Yeah, there's quite a big difference between <laughs> both of you. Let me put it that way. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I show it, you know. I, 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 I just try my best. You spend a bit too much time with Robin, I think, because he's quite. I mean, spoiler alert: he's our next guest. But uh, yeah, but you pro that will probably be very clear then. I know Robin since I was a small. I mean, we started go karting together, and he's the same as you. But he, I think, he will we'll talk about. It, but I'm convinced he he plays the game. Mm -hmm. I think you believe him. He's actually <laughs> serious. <laughs> no, I also. I, I mean, I know him very well. He's a very good friend of mine. But yeah. uh, I mean, he I sometimes think he do does, but I think it's just how he is, and he just doesn't care how what people think about. It. He just wants to be who he is, and I, from one way, respect it. But uh, everybody has his own. Yeah, everybody thing. has his own. I sometimes, like I said last time as well, because I'm I think I'm. Good talk about myself but very dedicated and I like it and I sometimes get doubts because people make remarks of it like like you do you laugh about it but <laughs> in the end it's it's the way I am and it makes me feel good and confident about the way I do and I think you are have it on your way you go play golf and eat a Snickers and <laughs> you it's feel amazing. confident <laughs> on a 24 hour race me. no but I always think that uh, as long as I feel happy and happy how I do everything and how I am, this is for me most more important. If, um, for example, I I, uh, I don't train so much, but before uh, the day before I have a fight with Victor, uh, with yeah, Victoria, my girlfriend, I would be more um, upset than being unfit. For example, you know what I mean. <laughs> this is completely weird. Maybe it's it's, it's a very just, interesting comparison. <laughs> no, but this is for me very important, and uh, my uh, my dad also knows. And um, I just have to be like mentally, I have to be happy, and I have to be. But I heard your new girlfriend has a drinking problem. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> She'll be not happy when she sees it. But yeah, sometimes we had a deal now that we don't drink until Christmas. So at the moment, it's going well, but. Uh, <laughs> So we need to time the release of this yeah. podcast, not the day before race. <laughs> no, she's very nice. She's a nice girl, and okay. uh, she yeah. doesn't make a big. I know it was just a joke. <coughs> she will. She will come back. Um, what is the best moment you've experienced with us too? Because of course there will be some bad ones, but what are the good ones? First, the good ones. Well, the best is the same for both of you. 
uh, was the moment when you when you both uh, Lawrence first of course um, got a professional contract with Lawrence it was partly with VW in uh, when you got the engine contract and when you were driving the formula, formula cars and then later on the the contract with Audi uh, and the same moment was with you uh, when you got your contract with Audi because that's what I have been doing it for all the time is try to have you guys realize what I didn't and so you can make a living out of it out of what I thought also was your dream both of your dream to become a professional race car driver so that was for me a uh, mission accomplished oh but it's nice eh? at least we have both us three yeah, I don't think there are off. so many uh, no brothers, brothers in the world yeah. who both are professional race car drivers uh, I know Ralph Schumacher hand, and Michael Schumacher before both Formula 1 of course that's even even higher but I don't think there are so many brothers, uh, both professional race car drivers, no. successful race car drivers. No, yeah. so that's why then that area you can. Count Sometimes one you one don't hand. realize this this very often, but it's. I mean, do we have nowadays the Van der Linde, Van der Linde, Cornell, but they are not so. They are not really involved so much. It's more Tom, no. Um, uh, the two brothers in US, um, Taylor brothers. Yeah, true. Um, and then for sure you have more yeah. but, uh, even Solberg oh no this is father and son, son. Yeah. but I mean like you said we are not really thinking about it because we got used to it but actually when you you know when you can yeah, one sit down or I thought about it a lot for, I thought of the last episode the first time we raced each other in Bathurst I was quite uh, quite a little bit emotional afterwards because I thought it was you know quite cool on the other side of the world both doing it as a professional um, in a big race like that so no, for sure. But this was the first time, and then we got used to it, and then Nürburgring went a bit different. But yeah. <laughs> talked about that enough. <laughs> What's the worst experience? Don't talk about Nürburgring. <laughs> <laughs> well, the worst experience uh, for you was uh, your co kart crash in uh, Parma. 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 I always think it wasn't Lonato, it was Parma. Parma. Uh, so this was for me uh, <laughs> uh, a total disaster because I, uh, at that time I just arrived in China in my hotel <clears throat> and then I got a call from uh, your trainer, uh, Michelle. Michelle, mechanic, saying you had a crash. So I asked him, uh, yeah, give me Lawrence on the phone. And he said, no, cannot do that because they're working on him. So I said, you have just one minute to give him <laughs> on the phone or I kick your head when, <laughs> when I come back. I want to speak to Lawrence and... Uh, then I got you very briefly on the phone, and you said some very nice, but very, uh, uh, yeah. You said uh, if I don't hear you anymore, I love you. So I was like, you know, wanting to jump out of the window to come home. So I was uh, all night with KLM in contact to have a flight back as soon as possible, which was the next day in the morning, I think. I don't remember exactly. And I was on the plane, and the phone. Uh, the seat was not working, so I couldn't call. And I was with my friend Kuhn. Uh, he was in contact with Lieve de Maaschalik and with the clerk uh, in Deurne to do uh, yeah, the, the operations with needed because uh, they wanted to operate you in Italy, and I refused. I said, no, I sent the plane to, to get you back <coughs> with my best friend who never flown before, and I was f yeah. afraid of flying. <laughs> he would never jump in a plane, and I called him. I said, Tony, you have to get my son out of Italy and he jumped in the car and he went. He went to the plane. <laughs> he shit his pants full all the flight, I think, <laughs> but uh, he did it. And then uh, I told him to, to land the plane uh, if I couldn't phone because uh, I need to make arrangements and everything and it went almost to a fight in, in the plane and then uh, they let me into the cockpit and I, I phoned there for a long time <laughs> with the doctors and everybody to, to arrange everything and then I arrived in Amsterdam I learned to Hertz, and I said, which is the fastest car you have? <laughs> they looked at me like uh, some idiot. I said, no, no, I need the fastest car. And I drove like crazy, even on the on the right uh, lanes where you're not allowed to drive to pass cars and everything. And I just arrived with the ambulance with you. Uh, that was definitely uh, the worst experience. I think um, it's, yeah, continue. You can say my part. With you, 
There were so many. <laughs> <laughs> How long is this podcast? Oh, <laughs> still have some place for you. No, I think with you, <coughs> knock on wood, not so many. You want to knock on his head, though? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not so <laughs> many. Uh, very things like that happened uh, in your career so far. But at the mo at one moment when you were in, in in Holland, I think also with Michel, right? Uh, no, it was um, with um, Tom. Tom. Yeah, think yeah. You crashed in a training, uh, one or circuit in Holland. I don't remember where. He flipped. No. Huh? He flipped. Yeah. Yeah. And training. he said, "I stopped go karting. Uh, it's finished. I'm scared." And he also stopped for like six months or something. And uh, so I thought, okay. What I'm gonna do with Trish now if he cannot go kart? <laughs> no, I mean, uh, yeah, I thought you would really stop and 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 got scared. Uh, so uh, I thought it was over. Your I remember. Career. I remember that I stopped for a bit, but uh, then I couldn't. I don't remember this at all. Anymore. But oh, I also don't really remember it anymore. But hearing about it now was some free practice. It was. Well, it probably happened. <laughs> <laughs> um. Most the important most important question. question, which, yeah. Who's the quickest of us two? Huh. You have one joker in the whole thing, not to answer a question, but... Why do you bring it up? Use it wisely. It <laughs> <laughs> well, um, actually, so far, I don't remember a real one-to-one -one battle with the same circumstances, <coughs> the same car, and same everything. So my answer is maybe not correct. But I do think that Dries has a bit more of uh, fundamental speed from himself. Uh, How much but Lawrence, <laughs> because of his dedication and, 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 and hard work, uh, makes up for that. So in the end, uh, let's maybe organize a real one-to-one -one battle and then we will know. You can go we karting can again, you know. Yeah, but yeah, we can do a series of things. <laughs> no, but I mean, yeah. Who will be, when we both retire racing in, I don't know, 10 years for me, 15 for you, who will be the most success successful at the end on Palmares? The biggest room, the biggest most trophy. Well, uh, if you look to the statistics, uh, you're 31. Correct. Trees is 22. <laughs> 24. <laughs> <laughs> so he's seven years behind. And if, if you look to his palmarès now and yours, he's catching up quite quickly in comparison with his age difference. So it will depend how good you will do in the coming years. <laughs> uh, who will win this battle? If Dries continue the way he is, then it looks like he might have the biggest palmarès. But you know, I'm in racing, you don't know what's happening next year. So, so I've been waiting for this question the whole evening because I'm going to be honest. This is the second time we record this yeah. episode. And last time when you gave the same answer, I was like, hmm, I know it's even Jacqueline, so I prepared something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, oh, my God. It's not true. <laughs> There's a website on the internet, and Jacqueline found this. Thank oh, you but love. it isn't uh, that count that about my karting career. Yeah, mine one neither. It's all the races you've done in your career so far, driver, driver database. Okay. And then it gives you a race win and a podium percentage. But does it also count that you have like 1,500 races more than I did? It's a percentage. It doesn't matter. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> Hello, Dries. So I've entered, uh, let's say, you want to start with me or with you? Doesn't mind. Your, you entered 227 races. Your race win percentage is 15%. Your porting percentage is 32.2. Mm. I've entered 351 races because I'm older and blah, 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 blah. My race win percentage, and this is with my DTM season this year, so... Just saying, seventeen point one, and podium forty one point six. Mm. Uh, so if the mic was like mobile, I would drop it on the floor now. But <laughs> does it also count that uh, I also have my father? It's zero win percentage and sixteen <laughs> podium. 
<laughs> he <What>? also on there. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not correct for sure then. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. No, that's surprising. Yeah, but did it but, also uh, count? For me, uh, that's consistency. You talked about Palmares. <sighs> Next question. Yeah. See? <laughs> no. <laughs> good, no, no, good no. I'm just. That, uh, no, 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 no. no you, we you talk about who, no, important, was who, important race wins, championships, ra- twenty-four yeah, hour yeah. wins. Yeah. yeah. So that was your question, actually. So what you just bring, brought up is nonsense. It was but not uh, about. Of course, project. it's nonsense because it's not in your advantage. You want to <laughs> have a look? Actually, yeah, I want to have a look. Next year, uh, you go to LMDH, so then a complete new story starts. Huh? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I don't. We're just laughing about. Uh, it. I just want to achieve also my f- goals, which I dreamed about, how and long, that's. How long did you take to make this? Was it a <laughs> Word or Excel? It's a screenshot uh, from the website. Okay. <laughs> you don't know how that works, huh? No, my take your phone, my like gram- does. grandma. But um, <laughs> does it also count in that, it, that when you were racing, the level was like very low? I think we need to go to the <laughs> next question. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, what would we have done if we didn't succeed in racing? Well, let's start with Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I think Lawrence uh, is doing already several things besides his racing. So I think, yeah, you proved that you can also do other things than racing. So I don't think you would really have a problem doing other stuff than racing. And you probably will do after your career. And you? Yeah, yeah. You, would, you would take over my company, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> be bankrupt in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> now everybody thinks it's that bad, which is actually not. Well, yeah. what would you like to do if tomorrow you, I mean, motorsport is bad in the world and you have to do something else? Would you be in sports? Would you do a business? Would you become a porn you mean star? If, 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 if <laughs> who says I am not? But, um, does it mean that motorsport is completely gone then, or it's just for me? It's no, you can't drive anymore. I would maybe do still do something in racing, um, but maybe be like a manager or be like uh, um, some to work in a team, like a high well, a team manager or whatever to to make sure everything is arranged. Not maybe not the arranging. You need to know the rules when you're a team manager. <laughs> yeah, well, not like a, a team principal, for example. Or I would work with my dad in the in his company, but. Just on a normal level, not to take it over. Well, at least not in the beginning. Maybe at one stage when I deserve it, I would maybe try it. But I would for sure give myself some years to to learn because... But you would st- prefer to stay in motorsports? Maybe n- not really. Because it's the same question if you retire racing, because I'm mostly o- already a bit older. I'm not there yet, but sometimes you think about it. But the, no. que- the question I always, or the discussion I have with teammates is... Would you stay in motorsports or would you go and do something like completely different? Well, it depends. I mean, for now, uh, you know, when, when our dad is still working a lot and is, he's still, I mean, his company is still, you know, he's still working every day. I would like to join him. If he would stop uh, next week and, 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 you know, give it to somebody else, I would probably not do something else in racing. Because that's the only ra- reason why I would do something outside of racing. I would not go outside of racing to 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 go and make bread uh, at six in the morning. <laughs> but um, yeah, so it depends. Okay. I think I would. I mean, I don't know yet, but I think I would do something completely outside of racing. No. Well, I would. Like I said, I would only do it if. Because I've been doing this since <coughs> I'm a kid, and day in day out. I think when you stop racing at one point, you miss something. Well, uh, sure, you will miss it, but I think it's I also time for new things in life, new challenge. And I've experienced it once, like you said, with Jacqueline, we did a, a real estate project in, in Florida, and it was it was really interesting and fun. Actually, it's completely different, but it's a bit of a different view of life. Maybe I'll miss it after a year. I don't know, but yeah. So I you think you always stay connected with the racing in one yeah. way or the other. Maybe yeah. not as a big part or small part, but. Somehow, I think it will always, you will be connected. Because if career is over, maybe they ask you to develop a car, which is also a lot of fun to do. Yeah, true. So I don't think you will refuse that. 
Exactly, it's a good point as well because if you look at like for example Tom Christensen or Stefan Nortelli or those, yeah, if now today I win Le Mans they, five times, then yeah, then, then you know that you get a, a lifetime status uh, at whatever brand you were racing for back in the days. So. so different, but there you need a, a proper Palmares yeah. to to have that status. You still need but a bit more. Yeah, the battle is on. We just saw it. Well, now Chris is gonna check his website after every race. <laughs> yeah, I won. Uh, but I, at least I didn't do it as you. I just I didn't put two uh, percent more to just to win this battle. But it doesn't matter. Everybody can go on driverdatabase.com. Yeah, have a look. Um, let's go on. <laughs> um, what do you hope we will achieve in the next ten years? Oh, that's actually a good question. No, it is a, nothing. It doesn't have to do. I mean, for me, the question is can also be like, what do we, what huh. do you expect us to achieve in the next ten years in and outside <coughs> of racing? Well, inside of racing, I just expect you to stay professional, have fun, get the maximum result because you know, in racing, next year uh, you move to a new brand. Uh, we all assume that this brand will be competitive, but you never know. Could be that you to BOP or whatever the brand is is one or two years not that good. So then also you cannot drive results. Uh, Lawrence is going to LMDH. Uh, all everybody expect Porsche to be very strong, but you never know. So mm. if you don't have the car to win, you can be the best driver in the world. You're you're not gonna accomplish anything. So just get the maximum result out of it. And just keep uh, doing all you can like you did all those past years and then you will be fine. Yeah, true. Do you have actually, because you asked a question to, to our father, but do you have like a career <coughs> dream to achieve? Like my one, I mean, I've spoken about it a couple of times, but you never really mentioned it, I think. Um, yeah, I do, but it's maybe you're going to laugh again. Um <laughs> For sure, I would like to be uh, a, a record, driver. A record holder of a 24 hours old. Or <laughs> yeah, this is the most important. Um, no, to just to be a, a driver who will be remembered as, as you know, successful and, and good. Um, but mainly uh, to, have, to have won a lot of races, hopefully. But also maybe, you know, it's, it's different to say this now, but uh, a driver that, you know, that they... I wouldn't say a legend, but something... Uh, you would like to be a I would like to be a legend. legend. <laughs> yeah, I also call myself a legend, Vincent. <laughs> um, no, but I would like to, and I also will try my best to achieve this, um, is to really, yeah, to, you know, when and when I'm not racing anymore and the young, young children trying to race and they can look up to me or whatever or read something about me, what I did back in the day, uh, this I would like, and I would like to try to aim for this to okay. do my best i don't have anything else special maybe you have to have a meditation yoga legend <laughs> or whatever but <laughs> other than that no well, i mean everybody knows my my goal so we'll see what is your goal actually i actually have no i i don't know to win all the big 24 hours you don't know yeah. that ah yeah does nobody nobody ever achieved this really so nick tandy is very close and he only needs to win daytona uh I overall which you can probably have uh, the chance yeah uh -huh. but there's nobody ever achieved this and it doesn't necessarily because nobody ever achieved this it's just for me but what are the big ones so daytona spa nürburgring mm -hmm. le mans yeah okay but overall not in class yeah because i have that le mans class but it doesn't count so Same. i still need le mans daytona actually i have more no never mind no <laughs> <laughs> yeah so we'll see and outside of racing what are we talking 10 years outside of racing but I hope in 10 years I'm still racing. That would be nice. <laughs> to, no, but seriously, if you are 41, maybe by, by the way, your training, it will not be a problem, but yeah. I don't know. I don't know until like how old you can. There, In the end, there is no rule. Everybody always, ah, oh, when you get older, you get slower, blah, blah, blah. But how do you know? It's because people tell you this. True. Um, there's no written rule that you have to stop at 40 or 35 or whatever. And how old was this guy who uh, uh, the last race in uh, France, uh, Coronel? No, Taquini? No, Coronel. Who won the in TCR. But yeah. there's some championships. Also in the GT3 he was driving. 
Yeah. He's like also 46 or something, I think. Yeah, but I think in America, if like I've, I've thought, if you if you are good, you can go until maybe now less with LMDH coming, but in the past you could go to 45, 50 in America. In Europe, most of the time after 40, it starts to be complicated. But How old is Alonso? 41. Okay, he's uh, maybe an exception, but... In the end, it's all in your head. Yeah, okay, well. but to be able to compete in Formula 1 and actually sometimes to be even uh, along the the, the, the the front runners with a maybe not as competitive car is, is different. Mm. But yeah, if you are 41 and you like Winklock, uh, he's, he, if you're still, he's 45, 44. No idea. I haven't seen him in a while. But uh, okay, he's, he probably also had his best days, but um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can tell it when it's I see yeah, it. It's the link of the podcast. <laughs> so yeah, I think that was kind of it for our second episode. Our first guest. Um, thank you for coming. Um, it was a pleasure. We uh, we already know now actually our our next guest. You can yeah, it's planned in. So uh, it will be Robin Freins. Yeah, um, we finally told him. He knows now, so um, he's he's uh, he's preparing himself as we speak. Um, so yeah, looking forward to that one as well. And then uh, need to find out some gossip and some surprise questions. We can. Oh, I know a lot, so uh, it doesn't. Okay. No problem on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Should be fun. Good. Thank you for okay. listening and watching. See you on the next one. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye.